This video is on the risk-free rate. Now the risk-free rate is a really important concept in finance, so I want to spend some time talking about it because it's not entirely intuitive. What the risk-free rate is, is it's finance professionals looking at all the potential investment opportunities around the world and out of all these opportunities they find the one opportunity that is the most risk-free and that becomes your risk-free rate so it's not entirely without risk you know everything always has risk we're talking about investments we're talking about the future there's always some level of uncertainty but what the risk-free rate stands for is what is the most risk-free opportunity out there and what's the return that you're expecting from that. Because what happens is that rate sets your benchmark. And in finance, we're always talking about risk and return. The higher the risk, the more return you should expect. Well, you're starting from this benchmark of the risk-free rate and it becomes this spectrum and the higher the risk that you take on, the more return you should expect. So let's talk about how this is used on a practical level because what happens on a practical level is people use U.S. Treasuries as the risk-free rate. So, and let's talk about why they do that because the US economy is, is somewhat unique around the world. It's uh, very massive um, and it's been very consistent over a long period of time. There isn't risk of political uprisings, it has a strong legal system, and so when you compare it against other countries around the world, um, the U.S. Uh, stands as the least risky alternative. Now, this could change in the future, but for right now and for the near term, the U.S. is the least risky alternative. Um, at least that's what, you know, most people accept. So, when you're looking at the U.S., the reason why government bonds are considered le less risky than um, company stock, for instance, is companies can go bankrupt. Governments generally don't go bankrupt. And the reason why is, you know, a company could have an accounting scandal and the next day it goes bankrupt and you lose your money. That doesn't generally happen with a government. A, a government really rep is represented uh, by the economic activity of its people. So, in case of America, the American people generate economic activity. They've done it consistently over a very long period of time, and a portion of that economic, economic activity goes to paying taxes. Those taxes become part of the government budget, and part of that government budget goes to paying interest payments to people who hold U.S. Treasuries. And so it all flows back to the American people. They are really the ones who uh, are responsible for paying these IOUs to the government. Because if the government ever gets into trouble with where they can't pay an interest payment, they can always just raise taxes and get the money that way. Um, I mean, you can't raise taxes forever, but in general, when you're investing in a government security, you're really investing in the economic potential of the people of that nation. And so comparatively with other countries around the world, the U.S. is a very low-risk place. Now, I'm not hyping U.S. investments. That's not what I'm doing. Um, you can invest in all kinds of opportunities. I'm just talking about the risk-free rate here. Um, and the risk-free rate, because it's low risk, is going to be low return. You're going to get a low return from buying U.S. Treasuries. But that's not the point here. What, whatever you're deciding to invest in, whether it's um, you know, corporate bonds, corporate stocks, emerging markets, you're going to be getting a higher return there. But it's all uh, comparatively 
like you're comparing it to your benchmark, which is the risk-free rate, which is the least risky investment opportunity. Um, so the point that I want to get across here is how interrelated everything in finance is. Because no matter what you're, it is that you're investing in, everybody's watching this risk-free rate. Because the US Treasury is just like everything else in finance. It's a market and it moves up and down. And as the Treasury is moving up and down, that's impacting everything else in finance. Everything else in finance is built on top of that risk-free rate. And I don't think a lot of people appreciate how important the U.S. Treasury is. And it's important because of this risk-free rate concept. So let's just talk through an examples to help you understand this. Uh, if you're making an investment decision, and I'm just going to use hypothetical numbers here. Let's say you're looking at an investment opportunity at a certain snapshot in time. You're looking at the U.S. stock market. Let's say historic. Uh, let's say at this moment it's returning an 8% risk premium over the risk-free rate. The risk-free rate at the time is, uh, you know, risk return of 4%. So 8 plus 4 would be 12%. For that stock market investment, you should be expecting a return of 12%. Now, again, this is built on the risk-free rate, which changes over time. And so you're looking at your investments with all these changing factors, but um, you're making decisions based on comparing it against the risk-free rate. You know, the other thing to consider is if you're looking at an investment opportunity and the return you're going to get is lower than the risk-free rate, it's lower than what you would get for a U.S. Treasury, well then that's not a very good investment either. You could, you're better off just investing in a U.S. Treasury because the risk return is not appropriate. So, to recap, we talked about the risk-free rate, we gave a definition for what that is, and we also explained why on a practical level people use the U.S. Treasury as their risk-free rate.